I don't think it affects him that much. I, listen, I think Melvin Gordon is a very good running back. I think that he can run the ball inside, outside, big, physical, and fast. He can do all those things and catch out of the backfield. However, I think the, the, the Chargers have changed their philosophy just a bit. They want to go to a two-back system, more of a running back by committee. They're, they're going to use Justin Jackson, Austin Eckler to get that done. Both backs that have proven themselves already in the NFL. It, he's a big difference between the situation that Melvin Gordon is in, the leverage-wise, and, and Zeke. Zeke is the man on that football team. The Chargers are a passing team. They've only, they only really run the ball 25 times per game. They're built on throwing the ball down the field to their tall wide receivers using Phillip Rivers' arm. So this team isn't built around Melvin Gordon. To me, that doesn't – him not being there certainly does not hurt their, their, their chances to win. Uh, to me, I, listen, I don't think he's one of the eight best running backs in football. I think he's fringe top ten, which is why the moment we found out he was going to hold out, on the show, we said, man, I think he is getting bad advice and going to overplay his hand. When you heard about the type of dollars he was expecting, the Melvin Gordons of the world are the guys who are really killed by the new NFL marketplace on running backs. Guys that are good but not great, who you think, okay, first round pick. Where they can be get, released, replaced by absolutely. running back by committee. It was so much more fungible. You look at, ah, could us, Austin Eckler, Justin Jackson give us 80% of the production at with 20% of the cost that he's asking for. But I do think they're better with him than without him. I think he is, he's not Keenan Allen. He's obviously not Phillip Rivers. But you could make an argument he's the third most important player on their offense or third best player on their offense. But there's this is one of the many reasons I'm down on the Chargers this year, Brian. Now, I get it. Last year, they were 12-4. and four. They were a tiebreaker away from being the number one overall seed. It was To me, it's really unfair that they at 12-4 and four got the five seed. The Patriots 11-5 and five got the two seed. But that was last year. This year now, we don't know if they're going to have Melvin Gordon. We know for at least a couple months they're not going to have the most talented player on their whole team in Derwin James. They also last year were 7-1 and one in one-score games. That usually bounces back a little bit, usually around 500 in that. And I think people should remember that ever since the Chargers moved from San Diego to L.A., they don't play no home games. Nope. They play eight road games and a bunch of neutral site games. Mm -hmm. And when you have Denver and Pittsburgh and Green Bay and Oakland coming to your building, I mean, those... Those are traveling fan bases that are going to take over that stadium where they play. And one other point, <laughs> if you dig into it, bless you, they're competing with the Chiefs, right? <laughs> bless you again. They're, no problem. They're comp competing with the Chiefs, who I think is the best team in football. Yeah. Certainly, I think everyone agrees, one of the best teams. Their home game against Kansas City is in Mexico. So, like, that's a killer, man. When you've got you, – you know you've got to go to Arrowhead. That's hard enough. But you don't even get them coming back to your place. That's going to be a neutral site game. So, they play eight road games, one game in Mexico, seven games at home where the other opposing team's fan base might be more than theirs for five of those seven. I just think all of those things – stack the deck against the Chargers competing for the division or even a playoff spot this year. You know what's weird, and this is this is one thing that I hate as a former running back, is, you know, Melvin Gordon just got all of his leverage taken away from him. Basically, they said, listen, come play for this $5 million or just don't play at all because we think these two guys, contrary to what Jerry Jones has been saying about Tony Pollard and he is he cool, those types of things, they're saying we think these two guys are good enough to replace your production. All of his leverage is gone. But let me ask you a question. P p take us into Melvin Gordon's head for a second. You're getting this advice. Hey, you're better than what they're going to pay you. You can hold out. You can afford to hold out. I, I guess that's the only real advice you're getting. I mean, whether you disagree with that or not, is that kind of the, the, the path you take? Well, I think you also have to assess the situation. You had two running backs that last year played well when Melvin Gordon was hurt. He's only had one year with over 1,000 yards. He was close another year. But, you know, Melvin Gordon, again, is a very good running back. He's getting bad advice from his, his financial people or his agent. Ten million bucks is a lot of money for a running back. It's not, he's not Gurley. He's not Zeke. He's not Saquon. But he's probably bottom part of that top ten. He's a very good running back. Ten million dollars would have been a good contract for him if that's what they are. And I think he looked at it, and his people looked at it, as, hey, when you're a first-round pick, if you're good enough to where your team wants to keep you, usually they try to work out an extension before mm -hmm. that fifth-year option. Like Zeke's trying to get it but two years early. early. This would just be one year early. And if Melvin Gordon was this level of player at any other position, as a first-round pick, he would have been paid. But this is the spot where running backs get killed. We can talk about Zeke. Not, Zeke's going to get paid. Gurley got paid. Le'Veon got paid. Barring injury, Christian McCaffrey and Saquon, when they come up, they'll get paid. First-round picks who are really outstanding. 
But when you are, the, the problem for Melvin Gordon is that Kareem Hunt exists. Third round pick, lead the league in rushing. The problem for Melvin Gordon is that the kid in Denver last year, Philip Lindsay, yeah. exists. That there are, if you are, uh, he might be top 10. A lot of teams feel like, man, we might, we have one of those guys that might be top 10 on the practice squad. Right. Because so many great young athletes play this position. They come into high school football, they play running back. College football, they play running back, and there's a surplus of them. You can can be a mediocre corner in this league and get 11 million dollars a year you've got to be a spectacular running back melvin gordon he didn't get that or his people didn't get that i don't begrudge him i wish he got paid i wish all these guys got paid Chargers are a tough organization to do business with from a player's perspective he plays the worst position possible for it and the chargers clearly feel like man we're not relying on you no. we, we we you missed four games last year they like eckler it just and by the way they he owes over a million dollars in fines. Like, they, if he comes back, unless they forgive those fines, this whole thing is going to end up having cost him over a quarter of the dollars he was supposed to make this season. Well, if he made $10 million this year and he's only coming back for five, he's going to lose a whole bunch of money, yeah. and, and they're going to still run him into the dirt and still and play a lot of plays there. Well, you, know, well, you I, actually think it doesn't need rejuvenating. Yeah, I don't think it needs rejuvenating. I also don't think that this team needs a rejuvenated LaShawn McCoy to win. I think what LaShawn McCoy adds to this team is a veteran that understands understands the <laughs> offense will put them in a great position. I think Damian Williams probably will split carries, but I think they have a very good offense. The other thing is that I don't think that this offense needs to be more dynamic. I think this offense has to play a little bit more to their defense, not stay, not stay on the field a little bit longer, not be in a situation where you're scoring faster and being more dynamic. I, I, I think this is a great situation for LaShawn McCoy. We talked about it earlier. In Buffalo, he's playing against eight, nine-man boxes. Here in Kansas City, it's going to be a light box, meaning it's going to be six guys on the defensive inside of the numbers to try to stop the run game. That's great for LaShawn McCoy. You have five offensive line, and then you have one of the best make-a-miss guy in the league in LaShawn McCoy over the last 10 years. He can make that one guy miss, get big yards for this offense. This is a great pickup for the Kansas City Chiefs. So th there's no risk to this. The risk is $3 bucks of guaranteed yeah. money. And I suppose, listen, the Kansas City is my hometown team. They're the team I had season tickets to growing up the Chiefs have also decided organizationally they just it, they do not care about off-field allegations this is another player who had an allegation a really ugly allegation relating to an ex-girlfriend it was now he never went to court was never charged with anything so but they some teams would say man with Tyree Kill and with bring in Frank Clark and with what happened with Kareem Hunt Kareem and with Hunt. the long history maybe but the Chiefs clearly believe if you're not convicted of something, we will just trust you to come into this family. So that's their prerogative. I just don't want to hear them say anything about what, what organizational character they want because that's they're about winning football games. That's fine. So from winning football games' perspective, the question is, was last year an aberration or was last year a 30-year-old running back McCoy. hitting the wall? Yes, for LaShawn McCoy. Because just two years ago, he was awesome. Yeah. Three years ago, he was in the 2016 season. He was spectacular. Five yards per carry, over 1,500 yards from scrimmage. 2017 season, another 1,500 yards from scrimmage season, and that was both those years where, even though Tyrod Taylor was decent, it was everyone knew the Buffalo offense started and ended with LaShawn McCoy, and they couldn't stop him. Last year was different. Last year, missed time, had less than 500 yards, had 3.2 yards per carry. So was that? That now where he is, if if that is where he is now, then he won't make a significant impact. If it's not where he is, if last year was an aberration, then my God, this Chiefs offense. You've got, I believe, the best tight end in football, the best deep threat in football in Tyree Kill, the reigning MVP, most talented quarterback in football. You've got three guys on your offense right now that run not 4-4, four, 4-3 four, four, in McCall Hardman, Tyree Kill, and Sammy Watkins. They already had Damian Williams as kind of a dual threat back. The question with Damian Williams is he'd never had 60 carries right. in a season. So now you bring in LaShawn McCoy. If he is anything close to what he was two years ago, then this will be the best running back the Chiefs have had, well, I guess post-Kareem Hunt, aside from Kareem Hunt, since prime Jamal Charles, and can do some of those same things Jamal could do, which is make guys miss, catch the ball out of the backfield. To me, it's very low risk and relative 
relatively high reward, even if you shouldn't bank too much on LaShawn McCoy making a huge impact. You know, I, I think the allegations are certainly something that Andy Reid will have to question him about. He probably has already done that. Going to a coach in the situation that you're already familiar with, that's a bonus for LaShawn McCoy, a much more mature guy, a head coach that you look up to in Andy <laughs> Reid. The other thing I think we talked about what happened in Buffalo last year, 3.2 yards per carry. That's terrible. You lose Richie Incognito. You lose a bunch of things on that offensive line. But he goes to a situation where he doesn't have to be the bell cow. He doesn't have to carry the load. Where the he just needs to be another one of the guys. On him, perfect right? situation for him, especially later on, later on in your career. Yeah, because you have all these opportunities that when they open up the offense well, like they were. After his a wonderful run in Philadelphia that you talked about, and that run really was. Aside from 2012 when he got hurt, I mean, you've got. 1,000 yards, 1,300 yards, 1,600 yards, 1,300 wow. yards. That's just rushing. Yeah. You, he always is going to add three to 500 yards receiving. He goes to Buffalo, takes the big money contract in Buffalo, and more power to him for it, knowing, okay, my life's about to change a little bit. I'm about to go from being one of the pieces of the offense to the focal point. Buffalo's a place that historically has trouble getting free agents, so they bring him there. And again, his second in 2016, 2017, he was really good. Yeah. He was a Pro Bowl player both of those years. Last year, I think Buffalo believed, okay, he hit the wall. The, the moment he got cut, though, I was texting with buddies from Kansas City. I said, how long till LaShawn McCoy becomes a chief? It made too much sense. They, they have been in flux at the running back position, and Andy Reid's there. And you also know that one of the places Cream Hunt was just outstanding for them was screen passes. Yeah. Catching the ball out of the backfield, misdirection, with, with, with his always been a huge part of Andy Reid's offense. You know this better than anybody. And LaShawn McCoy other than last season, has shown an excellent ability, catch the ball behind the line of scrimmage, and go make guys miss. I am curious with you, how will Andy Reid use the workload-wise, a veteran player at this point in his career, 31 years old, now on his third team? I think it would be simple. You, you try to get him 15 touches, meaning a few of those screen passes, maybe some dump-offs off the, out of the backfield. You try to get him lined up against a linebacker, and then you give him 10 to 12 rushes. That's how you get him his 15 touches. To me, LaShawn McCoy is an excellent pickup for this football team, a veteran that understands. He know, knows what to do in the offense. You don't have to teach him anything, and you pick him up for a very cheap price, reasonably priced. Great pickup for Kansas City. LaShawn Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.